time. Hello, everybody. It is uh, 12.30 on the dot. Sorry about starting a little bit late here today. I've been travel-tastic. This year alone has been absolutely nuts for the travel. As you know, we went to Abbey Road for about a week, 10 days, and we did some incredible filming there. Um, that will be coming out shortly. We, what else did we do? God, what didn't we do? <coughs> Excuse me. We did so much stuff. It's been absolutely ridiculous, but it's all been rather wonderful. Nothing to complain about. Nothing that, uh, at all. But to cut a long story short, we, uh, I just got back last night from Limoux in the south of France. Well, that's not entirely sure, uh, true. I flew back Saturday, but I went Saturday to London and we spent uh, a day in England in the UK and then we flew back yesterday morning. We left and got back last night. So it's, yeah, travel-tastic. That's all I can say. All rather wonderful. Um, you know, quality problems, as they say, you know, what, what, you know, I, I'm not going to complain about having a great life where we get to travel the world and do what we love for a living. I did get to meet uh, Moses Schneider, which was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, here we are. Hey, Eric, I'm not seeing this. Anyway, so we have, um, we have, uh, um, do, do, do. I think that's just, uh, we got a total restart on Chrome, maybe. A restart on Chrome, everybody. This is what happens. You have to do a restart on Chrome. Um, Eric's trying to find it. All is well over here, though. All is well over there. Oh, that's because it's connected to the wrong internet. Oh. Yes. There you go. When you're connected to the wrong internet, these things happen. These things do happen. Apparently, some 41 has announced a breakup. No. I, I, I'm saying that because I don't know anything about some 41. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, that's the, that's the it, scores on the doors, as it were. All right. So we are doing a song which many Academy members are very familiar with. It's a wonderful band called The Gallery. And I produced uh, an EP and an album with them. Or was it two albums and an EP? Anyway, quite a lot of stuff back in the olden days of like five or ten years ago. And I love this band because they, they were young. They were in their 20s, but they had a, a lot of Tom Petty in them. And this song is called Who's in the Right. If you haven't already downloaded the multitracks, please do. Who do we have here? We have Tom. We have Anita. Hi, Anita. We have Sheila. Hi, Sheila. We have Axel. Hey, Axel. Um, spill the tea, Sheila. <laughs> Walter Ray Mears. Um, Norman. Hey, Norman. Hey, JB. Hey, Mike. Hey, Marla. Hey, Martin. Hey, Tony. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. Let's check out the track. It's Who's in the Right by The Gallery. Now, I believe this mix, is this the console mix, Eric? Top uh, of your head? I believe so. All right, this is a consummate. This might actually be my Neve. Let's have a listen. Step 
Bethany Leclerc. <laughs> Stephanie Leclerc was um, hi, hi, new academy member. Um, so Stephanie is obviously French, and she was at Limu at the masterclass. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? <coughs> we had a lot of fun. We did have a lot of fun, and we will be doing many more of them. It was a real blast. So stay tuned if you want to go to a masterclass and go somewhere that's fully catered. How delicious was the food, Stephanie? How delicious. Accommodation was wonderful. Food was amazing. People were incredible. And, of course, it was absolutely beautiful there. Um, yeah, we loved it. Stephanie says, a lot of fun. Yes. All right. So listening to that, it is definitely analog and fat and warm. And I want to maintain analog, fat and warm, but we are mixing in the box. But I want to get a little bit more openness to it. I feel like I remember how I mixed that. That was probably mixed on my Neve, my 8058. Um, so, but this, the, tra the drums attract in my old studio swing house. This is exactly the same setup that I would have used on How to Save a Life. The drums on the track, How to Save a Life in particular, were this. So let's have a listen. Um, let's just go down and, and create a quick rough mix of the drums. Bonjour to you, Chetty. So just, again, what I'm doing is I'm going to listen and I'm going to create a really quick rough mix of the drums. The low end on these drums is fantastic. I'm going to pan. So at the moment, all I've done is turn up uh, the kick in, the snare top, um, snare bottom actually turned down, um, overheads left them where they were, where it defaults. The rack, I'm the rack. I'm going to post. Uh, sorry, pan slightly over to the right. The floor, I'm going to pan slightly over to the left. Looks like the tom trick was done to the rack, but not the floor. That doesn't make sense. Although I've had many conversations about how the floor is one of the best sounding mics on the kit. Cool. It's a great drum kit. I think this may have been my Ludwig. This might be my Vista light. So you hear the ride. Is very soft on a hi hat here. Ray Mine says I'm, I'm very famous in France. Now the room symbol is the symbol mic, so basically it's a symbol put in front of the drum kit, and then mic. Let's have a listen to it on its own. So good. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Now, the close room mics are a pair of inexpensive Audix microphones miking the wall, reflected sound on the wall. And then the far rooms are a pair of 57s on the walls. Bit 
tambourine. I'm going to pan that opposite. Well, you know what? I'm actually going to pan it opposite the ride. So I'm going to put it on the same side, believe it or not, as the hi-hat, because when the ride is playing, I want the tambourine to be opposite. Fantastic. Please hit the like button. We will be doing giveaways of uh, Academy membership and any other fun things. Now, thank you ever so much for being here for the first few minutes. I wanted to let everybody know, of course, that the rather wonderful people at DistroKid are sponsoring these videos. They sponsor all of our live ones, and we're very grateful to them for doing that because they pay, um, they pay for Eric, which is really nice of them. Eric, Eric, do you want to work for free the rest of the time? Well, no, no. Anyway, so we do recommend DistroKid specifically because as producers, engineers and mixers, DistroKid allow us the ability to get paid at source. Meaning if your artist or yourself puts up the music on DistroKid, you can assign who gets paid and what percentage, which is absolutely superb. Meaning you don't have to chase up the artist for payment, which frankly is really stressful for not just you, but for them as well, because then they're being chased by you going, hey, how's your accounting going? How many, how many albums did you sell? How much streaming income did you make? Where's my percentage? And because it might just be $72. It might be $72 a quarter from the streaming of their album, which everybody's like, oh, it's not much money. Well, you know what? If you've got 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 independent artists that owe you $72 a quarter, you can do the, ma the math. It's actual proper income. And I, I think I've told you the only artist that consistently pays me is Katie Laurel. Thank you, Katie Laurel, who does her own accounting and she's on it. Katie is on it. Most people aren't. And it, you can't really be mad at them. They're musicians. They're not business people. So use DistroKid. Use it, assign it at source, and you'll be in a really, really great one. So I'm doing rough. I'm doing a real quick rough mix. This is the original guitar player, Shay, who was really good. I always love this original lineup of the band. There's a heavy affected lead tone there. You'll have fun with this. So there's lots of elements of the bass, which we're going to talk about later. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? Down a Why can't we if God forgave us? 
Well, so what you'll find interesting about that, for those of you that are into this stuff, um, the kick is slightly ahead. Slightly. The snare is on, meaning the snare is actually laid back. So it there's there's just a kind of a relaxing part of this drum, the drums I absolutely love. I mean, it's pretty superb. If I just play the drum group. You hear the bass bleeding in. load of elements on the bass guitar a load and i'd like to be able to talk about that in a second but let's just do two things let's quickly let's quickly um listen to some of these drum elements here's the kick in now i had a yuri 546 eq that i would use on this definitely we'll talk about blending the bass there's some good weight to that I would do a little 60 hertz boost, a little 20 roll off, a little 350 cut, and a little 25 boost. And that was using a Yuri 546. Here's the out mic, uh, mic, which would have probably been a Sennheiser 602. Pretty good low end, to say the least. The phase is pretty good, but let's just delay the the this uh, kick in slightly to get some more low end. So you see here, I'm now going to go to samples above, and it says 146 samples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what it's like. Now, some people pick up and move it. You can. Some people use fancy software to realign all the phase. All I'm going to do is use time adjuster, which means I'm just going to lay back that mic, 146 samples. And we'll do a with an, a, an on and off for those of you that are interested. Here is it off. Okay, here's with it on. Interesting. I prefer it. I prefer it off. Now, I think what's happening, as you can see, is that after the initial hit, the rest of the phase is actually really good. You see all of this? So what's happening is I'm getting more low end after the hit. So off. Now with the time adjuster. So I'm actually getting less. So what's interesting, the initial hit has more low end because the phase of the first, like, three parts of this. So what would be interesting is a little bit like using a transient designer. Did we get that re-upped from last time, remember? Okay. So we don't have the transient designer available. We actually saw um, Ruben when we were in Limu. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, it is interesting. Uh, in, um, Ruben, who owns Elysia, actually um, designed the transient designer when he was 26 years old and working for SPL. Um, so anyway, yes, it's a no. I looked at Eric like, did we get that sorted out? And he's like, no, why would I have done that? Come on. I, I, I see you not writing the email again. Uh, I'm texting, texting Lee about it. Just need to write an email. Thank you. So I'm going to leave that off. So that's the sound of the kick, which I really like. Now the snare. Let's set that. Let's go to the snare. That, of course, would be my superphonic. Now, 
We were going for a very, you know, Tom Petty. So a little bit of ring, a little bit of body. Okay, so let's just do some fun things. So what I'm going to do is on this kick in, we're going to move really quickly through this so you can see what we're doing. Um, do, 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 do. So let's just grab some EQ. Um, actually, I know we were having a Mac DSP meltdown live. It actually happened to us. But I think that got sorted out, didn't it, Eric? Silence. Uh, just the one plugin that we were having the problem with. Yeah, everything else is opening fine. So everything else is opening fine. You heard it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> okay, so um, do 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 do. We are plugin agnostic. I'm getting the wheel of death trying to open this, but it worked. Okay, phew. I do really love this company, so I have absolutely no problem. So um, so we're going to go and do about twenty hertz ish, twenty hertz. We're going to bring this down to about the 60 area and boost. This is just a kick in. We'll do a before and after. Here's a before. Here's an after. So quite a lot of low end in there. Let's go to like 350-ish around that area and pull it down. Loads of weight. Let's go to, I don't know, let's go up to about 2.5, which I normally would, and boost a bit more. There's the bypass. And with it in. So... <coughs> There's a gentle kind of uh, exaggeration what's always already there, which sometimes I really like. You know, some of the best mixers in the world I've ever worked with have just kind of given me more of what I've already got. So now I copied that EQ down onto the kick out. So let's listen to it before and after. Uh, so here's none. Here's with. What's interesting is I'm getting a lot of like 1K-ish area, 1.5, this kind of build up here. So just for schnitch and schniggles, why don't we just go in there and cut some of that and then go back down and do some 2.5 boost. Now I'm going to do some low passing. Because this mic's on the outside of the kick drum. Hi, Karen. Thank you very much. I'm back. But the question is, is like, between the two kick elements, do I even really need to do this? Could the other kick be providing all the high end? Let's have a listen. Bypass it. It's much better with it with it on with the EQ on. What's the advantage? Well, this is where we move into the area of looking rather than listening. So, you probably know there's 155,000 ranting videos about taking multiple sources and EQing them individually over bussing them and then EQing them. Uh, the advantage is, is like getting in on, I like to get in on a very detailed area. Like I am not the top down mixing guy and I don't know actually any professional that would teach that, but I do know it's a quick and easy way of mixing. You know, they put, put 20 things on your master bus and mix into it. And I just, last week I saw another master bus plugin coming out where, if, you know, it's going to, this is going to make your mixes amazing. You're going to be a genius. So for me to make, I'm all joking aside, I like to get down to individual elements and then when I put them together. Now the argument is from people that are looking at the music rather than listening is that you see phase shifting. And everybody, of course, that's been mixing their whole lives will say, well, who really cares? What does it sound like? Not what does it look like? So I prefer to individually 
shape every element as much as I can, or, or if I don't need to, not at all, if you don't need to, before bussing it and then globally doing some stuff. So to me, what we've done is we've made the kick in our main source of high mids, etc. I can actually take this down and, and turn off this boost. Now it's and so the attack is coming from the kick in and the kick out is more of the weight. So that's that's why it would be a good idea. Sure, high end air, exactly. And the great thing about individually EQing those areas is I can take the high end out like I've done on the kick in, and then I don't have any phase cancellation between two microphones trying to keep, trying to um, compete in the same area. Now what I could do is I could just bust those two together because you suggested it, and why the heck not? So we'll just bust that, and now we'll have a kick sub. Thanks, everybody that's watching. We'll do a giveaway in two seconds. We can do a giveaway for everybody uh, for the Produce Like a Pro Academy. Uh, which I think there's about there's two or three hundred people watching, and I bet you most of them are Academy members. Um, so thank you. And if you're not, please come and join us. So this is for a free one-year membership. If you're already a member, you'll get an extra year. If you're a lifetime member, you can get any ProMix Academy course you like. So what do I want to know? I don't know. Um, hmm. Drums. Let's talk about drums because we're on the drums thing. Kick drums. Uh, does, has anybody... Do you record live drums or do you use virtual ones? That's a good question. Do you record live drums? If you do, say yes, um, and that would be great. If you use virtual drums, which ones do you use? Is it Easy Drummer? Is it Addictive Drums? Is it Slate? What is it? What drums do you use if you only use or you mainly use virtual drums? Let us know below. There is no right or, there's no right or wrong answer. Eric, at random, we'll pick somebody, and I'm going to get back. Now, as per Nick's... Uh, question. I'm now going to do a global EQ. So I'm going to pick the same EQ again. In fact, I just might drag and drop this down rather than going looking for it. Um, and what I usually do is sort of exaggerate what I do on the main one. So let's listen to it. This is just copy down from Kick In. Oh, would help if I made the input bus one. So we'll make this bus one. And now let's listen to the EQ. Bypass. Now there's a lot going on there. The thing I would argue is, first of all, I can take the attack down and we'll, 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 we'll decrease or increase that attack depending on the rest of the mix. This is something that's definitely going to change because we don't know how much attack we're going to need to cut over those guitars. So I'm going to bring that down anyway. We might be increasing it later, number one. The other thing I'm going to do, actually, is quickly go for some detail work because somebody was asking earlier about bass, guitar, and kick drum management between the two of them. So let's grab a an REQ, which is a detailed kind of plug-in, and then let's get in here and select like 100 hertz like this, and let's cut that. Widen it a little bit. What I find is that starts to build up. Um, and things like, as you're pointing out, bass guitars don't sit in there. So here's the DI. Quite sloppy, that bass guitar, isn't it? Look how far behind he is. It's nice that he's far behind, but there's a couple of times like that where you're like, whoa. So let's just, uh, I'm in group on the bass here. Let's just edit that forward just a little bit. You know, and this is a big part of being a mixer is just making it sound great. So sometimes making it sound great means doing things like I'm doing here. So now I'm going to pull this along here. Okay. Cool. So it was just one note I edited, but it was just a bit too late. Oh, I would definitely cut and move it rather than use the warp. The problem with the warp is when you have multiple 
when you have multiple sources, the phase just goes wonky as all heck. Uh, they say it doesn't, but it does. Okay, so just did a quick edit on that. Now, with the bass, there's multiple elements. We'll get to that in a second. But let's have a listen to the snare top. So the first thing I'm going to do on the snare top is just honestly boost the lows and the highs. Just get some... I, I don't necessarily need as much of the snare bottom on this one, but if I go and grab, um, you know... Oh, wrong one. I thought I was looking at... Because they're called Filter Bank. I thought I was looking at uh, Matt DSP there. I wasn't. So let's grab the Filter Bank. Shout out to Colin and Matt DSP and everybody. We use a lot of different company stuff, um, as you can tell, but I really like those guys, so it's nice to be able to support them. So I'm high-passing, so it's a little bit stronger, and I'm giving a little bit of body. Let's have a listen. Bypass. Back on. Okay, so I went about 150, and it started to be a little bit more body coming in. So now I'm going to go, I don't know, about 7K and start boosting that. Have a listen as it does it. And now I'm widening it a little bit. So that's much better. So that's under the hood, what you can do there. And it just I just widened it, the cue a bit. Bypass it. On. So it's nice body now. Let's put in the snare bottom. Actually, let's listen to it on its own just for schnizzle. Lot of mid range. So I'm going to put the, the EQ on just for the heck of it. So I'm doubling up the EQ. Bypass. I was experimenting there, see how analog I could do if I drove it harder, if it would improve it. There's a ring on it, but I don't know if that bothers me. And you shouldn't get too, in solo, you shouldn't worry about things snare rings until they're actually in it. Okay, out, bus two. So now what I'm doing is going for the snare here. Do, 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 do. So snare sub. Okay, I'm actually going to copy down this EQ, believe it or not, and start off in a similar place and exaggerate what I like about it, which is the bottom and the end, bottom and the top. Take the EQ off. I'm not a bit of fan fan of the ring when it's soloed, but I, I have to hear it in context. I, I agree with you. I don't, you know, if here it is. So like, where's the ring? You know what I mean? So I'm actually going to take the high-end boost down on the master bus of it. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we 
Yeah, I'm not hearing any ring in there at all. Um, once it's in the track, it's gone. So just, you know, it's this is the problem with working in solo. It's great for teaching, but we have to remember that, you know, in the real world, people don't listen in solo. So we have to hear it like that. So what, what I'm going to do now is I, I don't want to use the bottom snare to send to the reverb. I only want to use the top. So I'm just going to send from the, the top, which is three and four. So I'm just going to create a little reverb here. Um, we can have some fun. What I usually do, honestly, is start with the free, whatever your free, what, you know, what, what's your free uh, reverb in your DAW? Go to that, first of all, something really, really dynamic for us. In Pro Tools, it's D-verb. So I'm going to go uh, a medium room, one second. Actually, I like three quarters of a second. I might blend in nicely with the room mics. There you go. Pretty similar decay time as, as the room mics. In the track. So I'm not using anything fancy at all. What we could do is we could do a couple of things. We could take our snare sub like this and duplicate it. So now what I'm going to do just for snitch and sniggles is keep my same EQ settings, do everything, but grab a, a verb. Uh, sorry, a verb. Grab a compressor because we don't have the SBL transient designer available apparently. All these weeks later, we still don't have it. So, um, what? Who said that? Somebody said something? What? What? So I'm going to go and get the R comp. Um, and I am just going to leave the attack time being slow here. And I'm just going to crank up the ratio. And I'm going to do this. Okay, so you can see it's also increased the kick. So I'm going to grab another compressor, the same compressor, just because, you know, just grab that same compressor here, and I'm going to key it from the kick drum. So let's take bus five. Hopefully this is all making sense to you. Please ask questions. Um, and I'm going to take the kick in, and I'm going to send it from bus five. And of course, I'm going to set it to pre-fade so it doesn't matter if the track is muted. And now what I'm going to do... So see what's happening? It's now compressing the snare drum every time the kick plays. Now there's an exaggerated attack with less kick in it. Blend that in with the original snare. Take it out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna to toggle between it. So obviously it's gonna get a little bit louder because it's additional snare, but it's not so much about that, it's the fact the transient should be there. So there's that pa pa. There's an exaggerated transient. It's the poor man's transient designer. Add the verb back in. Uh, 
What uh, these are the uh, Princess Leia headset? No, I mean the uh, Odyssey. Um, was it LC? LCD X's. I thought that's what it was, but uh, yeah, LCD X's. I've just been called Princess Leia so many times with these things. I just thought I'd just cut to the chase. Cinnabons, yeah, they're the Cinnabons. We did extensive tests on headphones, and the two that we came back with consistently were these and the Neumanns. Uh, and the Neumanns were a little bit expensive. I think in the six, seven hundred, they felt like maybe a hundred too much but they were pretty hard to beat. So we've been using the Neumanns and these. Now, I want to get the low end cleaner. And the reason why the low end isn't as clean as it should be at the moment is because there's low end in those room mics, which I don't think we need. So I'm just going to... We want to hear the, all the low end come from the kick itself. So it just kind of comes in underneath. So I'm going to get a grab, um, any EQ. Um, in this instance, I'm going to use the REQ, and I'm going to do two things. I'm going to roll off about 100, and I'm going to take out some 350, just so it doesn't argue too much with our toms. So I'm doing that on the close rooms and the far rooms. Take it off. Have a listen. Put it back on. Hopefully you're hearing it. The low end's just a bit tighter. The low end is tight. I might actually come up a little bit more even. Come up here. And what's happening is, is it's taking out the low end in the room mic so it doesn't fight the low end on the kick drum. And you might be like, what does that, what do you mean, Warren? Because all these people tell me not to high pass. Yeah, I've got a, Lem told me many years ago, stop talking about the high passing, you bring it up too much. But yeah, high passing is important because you actually get more low end by, by high passing. So what's happening is just the low end is only emanating now from the kick. So I can actually take that same setting that I did and put it on my overheads as well. So take that EQ and put it on my overheads and it will do the same thing. It will make the low end on the kick drum breathe. So what I might even do is actually duplicate my kick sub and do another parallel. So like we did before. So what I would do now is, is take the compressor that idea that we were using, where we're going to exaggerate the attack a little bit on the kick drum, just a little bit, just a shade, just a, just a tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit. All right, we need to do another giveaway, don't we? I'm waffling on. So um, first of all, hit the like button, pretty please. Hit that like button, and um, we're going to do another year's membership. And by the way, who won last time? Last time was Nicholas Logan. Nicholas Logan, congratulations, Nicholas. So if you're not already an Academy member, this is a great way to win a membership. If you're already a member and you want an additional year, this is a great way to get a free extra year. And if you're already a lifetime member, you can get any any course from Promix Academy you want. We've got some in there which are so bleeding expensive. So it's pretty awesome. Okay, so I am now... So what's the question, Eric? I suppose compressors. We're about to compress. What's your favorite plug-in compressor? That's it. What is your favorite plug-in compressor? No right or wrong answer. Let us in. And once again, I want to say special thanks to DistroKid. Um, DistroKid, the reason why we recommend it to producers, engineers, and mixers is because, first of all, it is covers every single freaking streaming platform you can think of number one so there you go why wouldn't you use it you'll get it on all the platforms but number two and most importantly for us as producers engineers and mixers we can or as songwriters we can assign the ownership of the song to us in the percentage that we have agreed to with the artist so if you're doing a really cheap production and you co-own the master 20 percent 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent getting paid for that is really difficult because you've got to chase them up and they've got to do all the accounting and like i said earlier it might only be 72 dollars a quarter but if you've got a hundred songs out there which all pay 72 dollars a quarter last time i checked that is seven thousand two hundred dollars a quarter 
Yeah, getting the point, yes? So you really, really want to make sure that you use DistroKid for that purpose and that purpose alone, let alone the fact it's going to get everywhere all over the planet, is they do the accounting for you. So you'll get paid your $72 a quarter. And I'm just doing the math. That is uh, 14, that's $28,800 a year of $72 a quarter on 100 songs. So it's worth doing. It is worth doing it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mirror the compression I did on the snare to exaggerate the transient. So slower attack times and aggressive compression means it's after the initial attack, it's compressing it really aggressively. Take it off, it's going to be boom. You hear that? Now listen to it. Cool, in the track. See how that ring just disappears on the snare? In some ways, I wish there was more of it. At the moment, all we're hearing is the bite at the top. Sunny days some com compressors can uh, color the sound quite aggressively, yes. Sunny days and smiling Mixed feedback, Nick, is every Fridays. We didn't do one last Friday because I was in, in Limoux in France, but I will be doing one this Friday in the Academy, so if you join us... You can hear us do mix feedback and uh, inside the academy. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? Down a road on the old can take us. Singing songs of peace. Yeah, thanks, Ray. No, I, I do have to do uh, a proper. Uh, compression video. I've got quite a few. Uh, I've got to do some. Uh, I've got to do one that's a little bit more uh, based in reality. I know there's a lot of compression videos. I know you're talking about one, but like, uh, yeah, that's something I really, really need to do. So thanks for reminding me. I think there's a lot of very confusing uh, information out there, and it'd be great to sort of get it there. I do really talk seriously about it in my book. So you know, um, if you want. Please check out my book. It has a lot of detailed stuff on how to use compression as well, which is probably a link somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Isn't there a link below? Yeah. Go and check out the book. If you're a book person you like to read, please hit the like button. And uh, 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 what are your favorite compressors? So what did I quickly do? I just edited that downbeat so it's just a little bit earlier. It was a little bit late. And I want it to be late. It is still late, but just a little bit earlier. Thank you, Mary and Sam, otherwise known as Common Time Production, said, we bought the book and it is so in-depth. Oh, it's okay, Ray. I know there's. I know it's tough because there are so many different videos on the subject and uh, you're, you're just trying to help people, and I appreciate it, Ray. Uh, are you in the Academy? It'd be great to have helpful people in there. Because we have loads and loads of hopeful people already. The more, the merrier. We love our community. It's incredible. As you can see, most of the people here are. Townhouse? Yeah, I might try that. Now, when I recorded these guitars, I did a lot of work on them EQ-wise going in. I wanted them to be how they are. Um, I'm going to go and work on the vocal, believe it or not, more than anything else. Um, it's fairly well compressed on the way in, on the way I want it. Uh, I think it's a U87, or maybe it was my U47, I don't remember. Or it might have been my U48 in those days. Uh, it's probably the U48, the same mic I used with uh, the Frey, so it's probably the same 
Uh, that's How to Save a Life and the whole second record. We used the same one. I'm just going to quickly hit the transient design and see what happens. No. So it needs activation. All right. So plug in alliance, Eric. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We need to get that done. Is there any more plug in alliance? Did they get bought by somebody? They're all part of somebody else now, aren't they? It's not the same. I'm, I'm so out of that stuff. All right. Uh, okay, so um, what am I looking for, Eric? <laughs> oh, I want to use some fancy all-in-one plugin. Why not? I haven't done that in a while. So, who makes all-in-ones? Uh, all right, the R channel. This is old school. I've been using this since the 1850s. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that? So I just did a big, huge EQ boost. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? Oh, yeah, I like those. Cali Subworth is insanely good value for money. I think it's the cheapest one on the market that does everything. They actually overly engineered it. SSL would have been a good thing to use as well. Sunny days and... Aww. Mary and Sam said, joining um, Produce Like a Pro Academy changed our lives and we've had the honor of meeting some of the coolest folks, learned how to produce, and now we have ongoing, ongoing produ produce and production work. Thank you. Join Produce Like a Pro and you won't regret it. Thank you very much. Um, Mary and Sam are wonderful human beings. And we do all become friends. There's quite a <laughs> few thousand, thousand of us that talk all the time. So it's definitely... Uh, um, oh, you like the dry sounding vocal. Thanks, Prem. Now, being a U48 and having compression going in, there's not much, there's not much lack of low end on that, you know? Aw, thank you, Karen. Sunny days and smiling faces. Sensor, yeah, it depends on the recording. So when people send me stuff quite often, I will boost, I will boost and cut EQ, especially if it's like specifically uh Loads, needs loads of essing interest stuff. It, uh, I don't have any major de-essing issues here, but yeah. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? Down a road on the old can take us. Singing songs of peace. It's interesting. Some of this just feels like, God, I just need to put some reverb on this and the mix is almost done. It's tough. I know when I come back, I'm probably going to think there's too much uh, um, too much low end on things and the kick's probably a little bit too boomy and big. Oh, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. So going back to your question about the on Instagram talking about it, yeah. So what I'll do is like I will do concurrent like boosting EQ into compression, but um, making sure that I'm DSing at the same time. People send me stuff that needs to be brighter, but is really hard to EQ because of the DSing and stuff. You know what I mean? In the There's a real build-up of like 700 there, isn't it? It's all making my head twist. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That is like that frequency is killing me. Let's group that together. This is one of those instances. Going back to somebody's earlier question over grouping or not grouping, this is one of those definitely groups because um, there's a lot of build-up going on. There's rim mics. There's all kinds of schnizzle. So there's close mics and room mics. So we'll call this uh, gang vocal 
uh, it says sub. You can call it a bus, a sub, or auxiliary. It doesn't really matter. It's all the same thing. And we'll make that on seven and eight. And let's just grab a. Let's grab. Um, why don't we grab something fancy? We haven't done fancy in a while. We're going to do fancy. Spend some money on this mix. Everything's been free or cheap or comes with it. So I'm actually going to go. Let's see. I'm thinking it's about here. That's a massive build up. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Six, seven hundred. Turn that off and your head will spin. That 6700 is killing me. So back on. Yes, I've been doing this a long time. I can hear that. It's between about four and 700 is where they're, oh, 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 oh. it's like, wah, killing me. In the track. Okay, so we got some backgrounds there. We'll drop bombs all day and night. You're the one sounding out of sight. So this is a great plugin. I I, I hate showcasing. I, I love showcasing it, but I, I, I know it's not a cheap plugin. And I definitely don't want to be elitist and be like, hey, you, know, you have to buy this $200 plugin. But it's pretty amazing. I, I love the company. I love them as human beings, and I love what they've done. Every, everybody at OX Sound, you're the best. We talk about Mac DSP, great guys. Colin's amazing. Well, OX, OX Sound guys are fantastic. They've always been very generous with us, very responsive, and very good to our customers and clients, people like you, been really good. It really is a show of quality and, you know, so God bless you. Who's in the ride? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 The track. Okay, so the toms need a little bit of work. We need some reverbs and stuff, but I'm interested to see what the mix was like on the Neve. Really compressed. Okay, listening. This is it. now what we have. Yeah, I mean, it's, I love the Neve. I do love it, but you can tell that, you know, judicious use of EQ, only EQing what we need. Um, you know, and I, I, tracked, I tracked that on an API with a bunch of Neve mic pre's as well. And, you know. It's Ray saying there's more breathing room. Yeah, so um, let's do another competition. So first of all, I want to thank DistroKid, and we want to remind people the reason why we use it and recommend it is because um, of the way... Well, first of all, they, they're on all the streaming platforms, so they're everywhere. They're easy to use. Even I can figure out how to upload stuff. Whoa! Funny. But yeah, we can upload stuff. And Eric's done it, haven't you? You've uploaded stuff, Eric. Uh, yeah. If Eric can do it, anybody can do it. That's what Eric's saying. <laughs> No, it's an easy, easy to use, great, but the biggest deal for producers, engineers, and mixers is that you can assign payment at source. And uh, did you, uh, Dave said, did you get a winner for the last giveaway? Last giveaway winner was, yes, I did. And he emailed me already. I just don't remember. Apparently, yes, and did email. Let's do one more giveaway. 
So if you haven't already, you can join us at Produce Like a Pro underneath. If you haven't got the book, please get the book. Get the book. Get the book, get the book, get the book. It's absolutely freaking awesome, and it's selling like hottest cakes, which is really great. Um, I'm very, very happy. Thank you, everybody that bought it. And as Martin says, join us. Anders says he's downloaded the multi-tracks. Uh, for layered vocal takes, can you just copy the processing plugins to each take, or would you process the group of stacks alone? In this instance, I did it all together. Um, but if there's a massive build-up, I probably could have just cut 700 between four to 700 on all of those individual ones, or I could have just stuck the soothe over the whole thing. And in that instance, I took the quick and easy way out. Thank you, John. Yes. Uh, why do I mix with these solo, uh, these headphones? Because they sound freaking awesome. And I did a shootout over, I don't know, 100 headphones. And these are the ones I like. And you probably noticed that lots and lots and lots of people use them with good reason. Tis Bonus said, did you get my email, Eric? Is that who won? Okay, let's do one last giveaway. If you haven't already, please join us and produce like a pro. Get my book. I'm pushing the book. And most importantly, uh, DistroKid, thank you for sponsoring it. You can get 30% off, um, which is amazing. Just use the PLAP code and you'll get 30% off. So um, why do we like DistroKid? We like it because you, at source, you can get paid. So it makes, if you get all of your artists and all your own stuff released on there, the people that are owed percentages can get paid directly a source and then nobody has to do any accounting. And when we're talking musicians and stuff like that, trust me, like I said, I only have one artist who's good with accounting and that's Katie Laurel. Shout out to Katie Laurel, who gives us, sends us a quarterly report and checks every quarter. Everybody else, not so much because it's a pain in the butt. You have to sit there and go through everything and figure out all the different streaming revenues. And it might be like 0.0001 cent from, you know, Bratislava, making up names of countries, 0.12% on Australia. Cent, you know. The point is it adds up to 72 bucks or whatever. It might be a quarter, but you get it paid. And I think actually Distro Kid pays monthly, even better still. All right. So check them out. Yeah, I think we just need to put some verb on the vocal here. We have, all we've done so far is we didn't even compress it. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? Down a road on the old can take us. Singing songs of peace. Cool. So that's bringing it forward now. Sunny days and smiling faces. I got the ratio two point five. Sunny days and smiling faces. Isn't that where we belong? That was great. So the we belong, the we we's quiet. But now that we've compressed over top uh, the rest of it. Isn't that Thanks, Richard. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Please make sure you download the multi-tracks so you can do it. And Oh, hit the like button, everybody. Please like us. Nice work. Hi from Japan. Thank you. Hello to you in Japan. Isn't that where we belong? All right, so I'm going to just create a quick generic reverb. What do we want to do? Um... I'll make it stereo. I don't know. I think because I want to do, I want to use free, um, whatever the whatever your stock one is. So I don't know what your guys' stock verb is. I'm calling it just vocal verb. Um, you know, everybody has a different stock one depending on your DAW. I saw people saying they didn't like their particular ones. Yeah, please download the multi tracks. Get the book. Buy the book. The book. All right. So um, should we do something fancy? Should we do something fancy? What do you reckon? Let's do something fancy. 
Let's use an Abbey Road plate. What's the what's the stock? Isn't that where we belong? Down a road on the oak can take us. Singing songs of peace and love. Singing now. We're trying a different plate. So that's A. Empty looks on empty faces. I don't know what B is, but I love it. Okay. Empty looks on empty faces. A drive didn't help anybody. Empty looks on empty faces. Was something stolen from my soul? We did a vi uh, video on this, by the way, and Adam went into the room and sang in it. <laughs> Sunny days and smiling faces Isn't that where we belong? Down the road on the oak can take us Singing songs of peace and love Singing now Bring up those toms. So before, um, oh, please hit the like button, everybody. I see we have two, three hundred people watching and 167 likes. Could you make give us some more likes? I'm going to make a group of the toms. Um, so let's have a listen to the individual toms. Do -do 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 -do. So we're making, creating a group. Oops. Just made a mono one by mistake. Which would work, except all the toms would be in mono. So let's go and make a stereo one. There is a stereo on there. Marvelous. Okay. We'll call it, you guessed it, Tom Sub. It could be bus. It could be auxiliary. All right. It could be bus. Sub. So we went with sub. Okay. Um, So I am going to individually EQ these a little bit. So I'm just going to grab, uh, let's grab our friends Mac DSP. We've been moving all over the place and we'll do. So I've exaggerated a lot just for the heck of it. Let's copy that down to the floor. Take those EQs off. Yep, there you go. Go to the Busy Tom section here. I do sometimes ray um, EQ and compress my um, EQ, my um, my reverb. I see we have 180 likes. Can you make it, bring it up to over 200? Um, how many giveaways do we do? We done two or three. Two. All right, we've got one more to do. We have one more giveaway to do. Uh, okay, so this is gonna be huge. We're gonna do a lifetime membership to the academy. Lifetime membership to the to uh, produce like a pro academy. So uh, you can get. I think there's like 100. And, what do we need to calculate? 120 multi tracks in there. 150, 150, 150. 150 multi-tracks in there. Yep. So pretty, pretty awesome. Um, 
Your D your DBFS on toms as compared to kick. I'm not sure what you mean. How loud it is compared to the kick. I think get I get away with murder with toms being loud. You know, there was always that joke. Auric Wiles said to me, he goes, Can toms ever be too loud? You know what I mean? The button gets smashed whenever I see a video from Ron. Ah, oh, thank you, Sussel. Please hit that like button. So this is for a lifetime membership. So what do we want to know? Hmm. We did live drums. We did uh, EQ, we did compressors, didn't we? What? Ah, uh, what do I want to know? Seems we've been doing a lot of drums. Ha, ha. All right, dumb question. Um. Do you have a favorite snare drum? And if you don't, because you don't know the differences in snare drums, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so there's no wrong answer. So if you have a favorite snare drum, what is it? And secondly, um, yeah, lifetime membership. And, uh, and if you're already a lifetime member, you can get two courses from Produce like a, uh, from Promix Academy of any length. All right. So, yeah, what snare drum? What's your favorite snare drum? And if you don't know, that's fine. If you don't have a favorite snare drum and you don't know the differences, that's also fine. Just say, I don't have one. Um, so no wrong answer. And if you if you do record drums, you'll know that there are certain snare drums that you can tune any way you like. Um, I won't say what they are. Those of you who follow me know. So the answer, um, the one that fits the song, kind of works. I I get that you're being clever there, but the reality is is that I can think of a couple of snares that I can tune to be ping or boof and everywhere in between. So if there's one that you know, like a utilitarian snare, we all. Those of us that follow, we will know there's some very famous ones of that. Yeah. Um, but I also, you know, I also know drummers that have a snare drum sound. There's genres of music that have a certain sound, don't they? So just give us, let us know. I want to know an actual answer. And if you don't have one, that's okay. You know, tell us what you think is, the, you know, your favorite snare drum that you get the best results from. And if you don't have one, that's fine as well. You can say you don't know, you don't have one. I can't tell you what the snare on the recording is until we've finished. Because <laughs> then that will give away my own personal one. It's the same snare as on uh, uh, How to Save a Life and a ton of other stuff. Which snare in the snake slate trigger? It's not a flam on the kick. It's the room mics picking up and the overheads probably picking up the toms twice. So you're a good spot. There it is.
So, yeah, I think I'm going to delay this just a little bit. And there is, of course, that exaggeration between the snare and the toms as well. So once, once the tom became a little brighter, it starts to hear it. Um, the low end on the drums is so extended because we cut the low end out of the rooms and the overheads. So you hear all of that low end from the kick. Because what, otherwise what you get is a lot of phase cancellation. So you're right, actually, some of that flam, a lot of it is, is between the snare and the toms. Ah, Greg, you're very, very kind. So what I suggest you do, everybody, is download these multi-tracks and try them out. Um, try them out and mix them. It should be fairly easy to mix. It's a good... There's no samples being used on this, no kick and snare samples. Um, it's all live drums. Um, it's recorded in my old room swing house where we did, like, How to Save a Life and a whole bunch of other big records. Did an Aerosmith record there, some James Blunt, all kinds of good stuff over the years. So a really good room. Um, and the drummer was fantastic, and the drums were great. And uh, who won? Fidelity. With Ludwig Superphonic. Well, there you go. The Ludwig Superphonic is the snare I'm talking about. That one is, if you listen to the second Frey record, there is so much variation between snare. We have Big Boofy. We even have this track, which is super high-tuned. Not a piccolo, but pretty close. It's all actually the Superphonic. It's all the same snare. So that's the reason why I was saying, you know, it's good to to sort of like understand that, yes, you can have a snare tuned, like 15 snares tuned to different things, but it's something like a superphonic is incredible what you can do. Oh, fantastic. My Produce Like a Pro fonder, folder is getting full of, uh, uh, full. Uh, love these practice mixes as are a godsend. Well, I'm really glad to be able to help. So, um, and Karen says, I love mine. So versatile. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring. Please, if you haven't already, join just DistroKid. And when you release your music, release it on there and get your artist to release it on there and then assign the payments at source so your percentage that you're owed will get paid directly to you. And if you've got hundreds of songs released that are all making a few dollars here or there, it adds up. Streaming is not going away. People want to love to hate it, but get in on it and make sure that you are actually getting paid. So DistroKid is really good for that. Thanks, everyone. So long. Farewell. Auf Wiedersehen. Au revoir. Ciao. Um, tot scenes. And uh, yeah, talk to you all soon. Thank you. Tschüss. Goodbye.